We go now to Frank Glasner, CEO of Veritas Executive Compensation Consultants. He joins us now from our bureau in San Francisco. Frank, welcome to Bloomberg News. Always good to see you. And good to have you. Uh, good to be back again on your show. Thank you. Uh, uh, Frank, can you give us a sense of uh, your reaction to uh, the report that Lizzie O'Leary just gave us? Well, you know, I think certainly that the uh, administration and Ken Feinberg has the right to review these pay packages, but is really not legally uh, capable of clawing the dollars back or making the dollars come back from the past, and certainly is going to be reviewing the packages for anything that's contrary to the public interest and hopes to, um, I'll put it in my own words, embarrass these individuals or their boards into to cutting pay, but again, really doesn't have the legal authority to cut pay itself. Well, Frank, might I ask then, if Mr. Feinberg doesn't have any legal authority, then what is the meaning of this Pyrrhic victory? You're telling us that it has no legal teeth. Well, it, does, it doesn't have any legal teeth, and uh, you know, just talking about companies that had failed in the past uh, and, and trying to recoup the dollars or pay back the dollars, uh, you know, all we have to do is go back in the past and look, uh, very recent past, look at the $135 million that Dick Grasso got that was under such a great deal of scrutiny and outrage, not a penny of that paid back, the $241 million paid to uh, Bob Nardelli at Home Depot, uh, $40 million dollars paid to Kerry Killinger as WAMU went bankrupt. Not a penny of that paid back. Over $100 million paid to Angela Mozillo of uh, Countrywide. And now $57 million in pension benefits going out the door to Ken Lewis, who recently, uh, you know, went out the back door of Bank of America. So, you know, to say that uh, we're going to be cutting pay, I think, in fact, is pyrrhic indeed. I think what we have to do is concentrate on all of these ships that went down and get some of that money back, perhaps. Uh, Frank, I'm a little confused, I have to say, why Ken Feinberg isn't able to uh, do what he says he's doing today. I mean, he has been appointed by the government for expressly for this purpose. Uh, if you can make it clear to us, is it that it, he can't do the clawbacks, but he can cut the pay for, for 2010 for these folks? Well, I think, uh, again, uh, that one really has to look at the big picture of total pay. While it said that they're going to rein in cash pay, it says right in the same breath that we're going to take the majority of pay and move it to stock in the companies that will vest over time. If we take, for example, uh, cash pay that may have been paid out, and let's say it was going to be a million dollars, and then we're going to say, well, look, we're going to pay a maximum of 500000 in cash and take the other 500,000 and put it in stock at a time where these companies are trading at their all-time lows. All we have to do is figure it out ourselves that if we have stock that's granted with a $500,000 value and it rides up like ships in the tide in an improving capital market, that we're actually increasing the reward, not decreasing it. Well, the, one of the other things that the report says is that um, the majority, a vast majority of the folks who've been affected by some of these pay restrictions have remained in the same place. They haven't changed jobs, which is something that a lot of the financial companies have talked about. Do you think it's for this very reason that, in fact, these folks are going to be continuing to make more money and they're just not taking the Feinberg rule seriously? Well, if we look at the, let's not talk about the 85% that stayed, let's talk about the 15% that left, uh, probably most notably there, Andrew Hall and his, his traders at Philbro left. There was $100 million due to Andrew Hall and quite frankly, well-earned dollars and uh, left because the bank wasn't going to pay the money that had been earned. And, and in Hall's case, this was really truly pay for performance and pay that was earned based on the achievement of some very, very clear financial and operational targets. So individuals like Hall have left. And let's say those individuals, which were the cream that really rise to the top of these financial institutions and other manufacturing companies that receive TARP money, those individuals that left, left for a reason. And the 85% that remained, remained there probably because right. of soft job markets or the opportunity to earn more money than they could at these financial institutions right. versus leaving the security of the nest here. And, and Frank, I would imagine uh, by extension then, this is the shot across the bow to boards of companies. What message does this say to them as they meet to decide pay? 
Well, look, for every one of these bad apple senior executives that have received the money where it wasn't earned, uh, you know, the money was out the door. And honestly, again, with regard to Kenneth Feinberg saying that they're going to try and embarrass these companies into paying it back, that's like trying to chase the cow back in the barn after kicking over the lantern that created the Chicago fire. The message to the boards is just this. For every one of the bad executives, there probably are 99 great executives who are truly, really trying to earn their livings right now. And the boards are very, very hardworking, trying to do a good job, but honestly, a little frightened as to trying to pay out what might be earned or what might be right for fear of what others think right now. So the boards are working hard. Message to the board are not focusing on how much we're paying, but how we're paying it, have very, very clearly defined performance objectives and make sure that the dollars that are paid out were being paid uh, just like the, the uh, plans that Veritas designs pay for performance and as long as performance objectives are met and dollars meet that performance there shouldn't be any question at all. Frank Glasner the CEO of uh, Veritas executive compensation consultants joining us from San Francisco. Frank thank you so much we appreciate it. Again thanks for having me back.